All right, here we go. Rolling a D5. I got a one. So once again, it's it's Chapman. It's Alex again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna give you a thousand credits this time. I feel like it's. I feel like the dice are loaded. Easiest thousand credits I've ever made. All right. Um, let's see. My notes say. Uh, we were of course, uh, as we have been for a while now, heading trailer trailing uh, towards Astaltine from uh, Marion, and it was on our way in that we were hailed by a ship that asked to inspect us, and that's where that session began. Was the Sword of Truth is what the the vessel was called, and they boarded the cargo bay. Uh, they were led by Lucas Kelly who is uh, the former first mate of the Autumn Gold. I think each of us had encountered them before in each of our own previous journeys. Or at the very least, most of us had. Um, and he told us that the Imperium and the uh, Duke of Deneb were kind of retrenching in their power and influence from the Springward Marches. And... In that power vacuum, Duke Norris of the Iterati system seemed to be uh, taking advantage of things and setting up his own shadow state in the region. I'm kind of painting a, a, a long-term picture of the fate of this particular part of the universe. So uh, he had asked for help in overthrowing Duke Norris. Uh, we spent a very long time debating. Ultimately, we, we more or less just declined. Um, we then headed into Astaltine's belt, and uh, Lothak actually stopped us and asked us for a crew meeting uh, to address our upcoming uh, plans, our mission, uh, with the Kafurkanok Varger shipping line. Um, so we were intending that we were going to do some work with them, mostly just for the purpose of getting closer to them to see if they're was any kind of connection we could divine between them and that uh, local terrorist group per the request of the scout services back on Flamarian. Um, and she said, hey, I think that the Kavurkanak are going to kill you guys uh, if you don't do this carefully. So we decided that um, we need to, to do our best to play by Varga rules. We made the Kafurkanak guys come meet us at our ship. We showed off our collection of dead Varger <laughs> um, to intimidate them. And we tried pretty much just pushing them into making a deal with us over our, uh, our, our arms sale instead of having to actually talk about any of the history that we had had uh, in the past with them or that uh, Varger terrorist group. It more or less worked. Although I'm, I'm pretty sure they were able to tell that we totally were like, like enemies of that terrorist group because of uh, uh, our history on um, Walston. Um, and then, of course, at Astaltine, uh, most of our low passengers lived. We checked for cargo and passengers, as always, and I don't believe there were any. So I don't think there's any more business we had to do there before just heading out for Bowman. Yeah. Um... Uh, on the matter of the Varger uh, meeting, suffice it to say, it seems like it went pretty badly wrong. I mean, at the very least, you didn't like get in trouble with the law and end up with like a total shootout on the ramp uh, with a bunch of dead citizens or something. But you know, like so, uh, there was like a Our sword main fight. The priority was selling guns, and we did that. <laughs> and you did, and you took a big loss. It. I, it seemed to me to go it it didn't it it was a sad outcome generally speaking it seemed like it wasn't uh the inroad with the varger just didn't seem to work out um they kind of promised you you know like hey don't come around the the, the conclave and i do want to clarify one thing uh it, they had actually asked it, it it was not apparent to them at all what your relationship was with the terrorists however it did seem as if they knew what these other Varger like were, and uh, it seemed like they didn't have some sort of um, positive relationship with them. 
that is something that sort of played out and I'll point back to. But uh, yeah, the Varger deal took a loss and then it, it all said and done. Um, with the lack of cargo and passengers, you find yourself on the way to Bowman um, and you had to take your own personal money. So far, none of the crew have been paid in uh, however many months of freelancing. Uh, there's been no payout. Um, and the group pool used to cover mortgages and ship costs has gone to zero. Um, so that's, uh, that's where we're, we're starting tonight. Grim, uh, kind of, uh, and then, yeah, at the beginning of the session, this, this contact you had that was dragged away by Imperial Marines was like, yeah, everything's going to crap. So grim tidings all around. And, um. I think you were literally just breaking, uh, breaking dock from Asteltain. Do I have that right? I think that's where we left. Yeah. Where's all your yeah, all's I think tokens? That's where it was. Oh, I still have you all in the bay with the Varger. Oh no. Let's get rid of that. And bring you all back to the cockpit, to the bridge. Alright. Chapman's the pilot. Shipley is the navigator. Klaus sits in a captain's chair. The rest sit in jump seats in the back. And then you got sensors and comms with books. And Doc Ocean, we will also give him a jump seat. So. And then, where's Marcello? Oh, no, actually. Hmm. You put your token back on there. I don't know where your token is. Let's see. And Marcello is. What does the ship say? Marcello is the engineer. Yeah. So I'll just kind of put you over here. Now we'll say that you have like a chair near the um, front sensor maintenance access way. There we go. That all kind of makes sense. All right. So you depart Astelteen and start heading out of the system. Let me take a look at Astelteen. So, as usual, uh, Shipley, if you could make your navigation check in secret, don't tell us what it is yet. And then, uh, Marcello, if you could make your engineer check in the open, see how the engines are running, and take it back out to, out to the dark. Russ, can you see the roll I just made? Uh, it looks like it didn't roll it. It looks like it uh, just did 2d6. Okay. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, there's, a, there's a dice function in the chat on the bottom. You just click on the, the d6 twice and then roll. Or you've got it on the bottom left. Or it's a forward slash roll space 2d6. Oh, I did see it. I think okay. that is. I think that's a public that. roll, right? Private yeah. roll. Yeah. Looks like. uh, it looks like it went to the GM because I do see it. Are you okay, well, if nobody else can see, I can see it. I just want to make sure that nobody else can see it if it's supposed to be private. Yeah, yeah. Uh -oh. I can see it. Okay. It, um, all right. Oh, 
There we go. Nasteltine is an A. So, you start departing Asteltine. Uh, you get out about um, it only takes you to get a safe jump distance in Asteltine. There's this large asteroid and Asteltine is, is uh, known for its asteroids, especially its metallic asteroids. They, uh, they mine for metal here in the asteroid belt. And that's how they really have all the indie traffic that they have. The advantage to that is you're not near a prime world in a large gravity well. So you are able to jump uh, in just two hours uh, at, at, uh, at thrust one, at 1G. So you make it out to a safe jump distance in an hour and 10 minutes, hour and 13 minutes, um, or two hours and 13 minutes. And... Um, How's the, how are the engines? Well, I rolled a six plus engineering of one. Uh, it's a seven. A seven. There's a, yeah. an, there's an indication that there's a disparity. Because you have these two main drives in the back, okay? And uh, the main indication of health is going to be if they have parity. If they're, if they're kind of running at the same. Um, mm -hmm. and the, the maneuver drives have a disparity between them. It shouldn't be a problem unless it becomes a problem. Does their ship like drift to the left slowly? Like, do I got to compensate for that? Yeah. Yeah. You, you notice in the, uh, automated flight control system, there is a, uh, an asymmetric thrust in the maneuver drive. Keep monitoring it. Monitoring it. Okay. And with that, um, you uh, enter jump space. Hmm. Everything kind of like peels off around outside of the uh, from um, from what you can view, and you're in your own little pocket universe and jump. And um, you got probably about a week, as always. Is there anything that anybody needs to accomplish in that week of time? Hit the books, as always. And not my teammate that is. I'm studying. <laughs> <laughs> please, please don't hit me. <laughs> Did books pass that check? Which check? The back when we did the, uh, the check to see if you all could roll new skills. And uh, there was like nobody a, passed. Nobody passed. It wasn't but, uh, I thought books was one of the ones studying, but yeah, uh, yeah. I think myself, books, and Shipley. We're just like yeah, we we're met studying. the requirements to be able to increase our our knowledge. Okay, so you guys are keeping a track of it because at a certain time, fifty-two weeks or whatever it is, you have like a a roll you're gonna make or something, right? And that determines mm -hmm. if you yeah. So yes. Yeah. And you also pay every week. Like you cash out whatever it is, what, 100, 200 credits or 150 credits or something? Yeah. So you can mark me down for another 100 credits down. Because so I'm going to do two sessions per the usual. Same. Same. Uh, are there any other things anybody needs to do while they're in jump? You just got, uh, you know, um, I can't remember if we said you have some passengers and cargo. I think the answer is no. I think you have no passengers and no cargo, if I recall correctly. There was nothing available. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, you know what? To, to be perfectly honest, I think, I think we skipped a step there. Actually, no, you have three mid and one low. Asteltine to 5678908. Oh. Well, that'll pay for gas anyway.
but yep. uh, I'm hoping for some luck. Okay. All right. If nobody uh, has anything else they want to try to do during the jump, about 168 hours or so pass, and um, you guys return to your stations, get your vac suits on, uh, get everything suited and sealed up in case anything happens, and uh, you make the exit from jump Chapman. And like all of a sudden, space like peels back in around you, and the stars reassemble, um, and uh, it looks like. It looks like Shipley got a six on the navigation check. Did I get that right? Uh, let me pull up my character sheet real quick. No, I mean like on your roll. I think I or four. Yeah. So what? A four. Yeah. Okay. I was going to double check my. Yeah, my bonus is because I did not roll six. I think I navigated us into an asteroid. <laughs> <laughs> Very low odds. You think about it. The worst part is that you make the roll at the beginning of the jump, and you have to spend the next week knowing how bad it was. You keep it secret for the rest yeah. of the time. <laughs> <laughs> This is strange. Maybe the map is different or something. I don't know. Um, oh, weird. Okay. Yeah, so here you are. Uh, and it's a plus one is a five, I think, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you arrive in the Bowman system. You exit uh, jump space. No, no, should be five, six, seven, nine. Oh, sorry, five, six, seven, nine, oh, eight. And what do you do as soon as you arrive? Uh. Well. Standard operating procedure. All right. Well, the first thing we do is scan. <laughs> okay. Scan. Okay. Yeah. Well, and and also we should be. So here's the question: zero population. You know, if I remember, it was just like a skeleton crew, like little research facility down there. That's right. Um. They're very unlikely to have anything. I suppose we could check for passengers. They're going to have unrefined fuel. Um, but really, we should be planning on, you know, setting down and taking off, is my opinion. We don't want to waste any time. Fine by me. I'm not allowed off the ship here anyway. <laughs> You're not yep, welcome I'm... in 567908 anymore. <laughs> Um, I mean, I I'll, I'll look for a cargo just because why why not look? But I can't find my solar system map of five six seven nine zero eight. But uh, uh, the main thing to know um, is that it is so you you initiate a scan as soon as you come into system, and there is uh, seven different worlds. Um, oh, I have it right here. Here's the solar system. Um, see where you come in at the roll of five Um, you arrive at a roll of five, 40 hours away from the prime world, which is just a dust ball. <clears throat> and it has a, um, uh, it's a, it's another binary star system. Um, 
and you can see like really far away, you know, about three billion kilometers away in, in, in the scan, you can tell that there's another star <clears throat> uh, that's part of the uh, binary star uh, system. And then you are in um, the one where uh, there is 567908, which is the third planet. It exists in kind of the, um, uh, the terrestrial zone of, uh, of the K5 star. And um, <clears throat> you essentially appear like um, 40 hours out from 567908 toward the second star, toward uh, the white dwarf star, um, and away from all the other planets. All the other planets here are terrestrial. One of them has a large planetary belt. There are no gas giants. So that's what you get on your scan. 48 hours. I give Shipley a look like, what? Were you afraid to get too close? There's a lot of rocks in here, okay? <laughs> yes, they're several thousand miles apart. <laughs> Well, best speed to that spaceport. <clears throat> All right. Or the or the landing pad or whatever. <clears throat> All right. For the next uh, two days, you encounter nothing on the way to five six seven nine zero eight, um, and then you uh, you come in for a uh, a landing. It is uncontrolled. No one contacts you as you land. It has a single pad with some uh, silos and towers. You can see that there are guards here. Um, and there are weapons trained on the pad and the skies and the, and the ground nearby. There's one massive super lake. And then just uh, some mountains off in the distance. And then just like dust. And a very thin atmosphere. Um... <clears throat> That's essentially not breathable on its own. You would need your rebreather. And um, you come in to land, and um, a few guards come out and lazily prepare to uh, to refuel you and uh, to provide basic services and to make the exchange. One of them has a data pad. Let's check the boards. Just. Say a prayer and check the boards. You just, um, they wait to like greet you. I don't know if you pop open the, the, the side, uh, cargo, um, door, uh, which the, the same that the others come in before when they connected umbilical, uh, or, you know, or if you just lower the whole car, the front, the, the or the back cargo, <laughs> like ostentatiously, I don't know how you do it. But um, <clears throat> they come up, they have their own rebreather masks on, they look really bored. One of them has a data pad, and it's like, um, who, who goes out to greet them? Who's going to do the, uh, that kind of work? I, yeah, I designate M Marcello. <laughs> I, 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 I nominate Marcello. Yeah, he knows a guy here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Go, go, uh, go share a smoke with your buddy. <laughs> and see All if right. any of them want off this rock. Kids, well, if they pay. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> All right. So I, uh, I amble down the, the, uh, the, the, the ramp for this guy. Hello. All right. You got your rebreather on. You seal the door behind you. Okay. He, uh, he looks at you and he, he says, you know, hey, traveler, uh, how much fuel you want? Uh, enough to fill us up, please. Okay, for an A1, no problem. Standard rate. And uh, he taps some things on his pad, and they uh, they take some, some stuff out. It looks like it's a below-ground um, uh, hydrogen storage, and they, uh, they connect <laughs> it up to the ship. Uh, probably Chapman has to actually enable uh, the valve uh, to receive from outside and, and check it and everything, and probably... Um, well, since you're not on the ship as engineer, probably books would, you know, check to ensure that the fuel quality 
and everything about it is is correct you also entered an atmosphere so you probably want to make sure that there's not some huge difference in pressurization and temperature or something like that too so anyways you go through all this kind of boring stuff and they check all that off and they don't bring up cargo or passengers <laughs> we're aboard of any kind what's that they don't bring up cargo or they yeah they don't bring it up uh, the, there doesn't seem to be a board or anything they just kind of in a very bored fashion start to work to refuel your ship okay make sure to ask them if they got any got anybody or anything going or coming yeah and don't yeah. And don't forget to use the secret handshake all right <laughs> Uh, doesn't look like the busiest starport here, but surely you've got uh, got a board up uh, you know, for jobs and stuff. One of them laughs, and the and this causes the other one to kind of wake up, uh, and and he says, "We actually do kind of have a starport. It's really funny. We've got like a we've got like a vending machine in there." And uh, a place to sit and uh, a place for like a, a waiting area, for, like a passenger terminal. And then he looks back, he looks back at you and he's like, oh, wait, you're serious. No, I'm, <laughs> oh, we don't have any, no, no, this is just, uh, this is a research outpost. But I, I get the confusion, I guess, if you haven't been through here before. They just, uh, uh, we, we're an Imperial Starport, technically. Uh, we have to sell fuel and uh, do basic customs. Um we own the facility. Uh, technically, the Imperium doesn't own the planet. So, it's, um, yeah, we fuel ships that come through here, but. So, this uh, is basically a rest stop. Gas station, rest stop. I don't know. The, the eggheads on this planet, they, um, uh, they, they do some kind of work out here. Uh, you know, to Curry Lines uh, Company, they, they hire us. We're uh, private security, so. But yeah, no. Gotcha. If you if you're a free trader, I uh, I'm not. Uh, we just offer fuel. We don't have a. We I wasn't kidding. We actually do have a passenger terminal. It's kind of funny to me. They use it as like a conference room now. They usually clear the chairs out. Oh boy! All right, thanks. Uh, I'll be back with you in a minute. Switch channels to uh, the ship channel. Uh, hey everyone, it doesn't look like there are job boards here. The place is just a, uh, basically a fueling station. Fueling and custom station, not really, uh, it's a place, uh, trade is done. I know that's not what you wanted to hear, Captain, but, uh... Well, that's kind of what I expected. Still, we can, uh, yeah. we, can off we can offload our passengers. It just They're heading cool. here. Are the, are the passengers heading here? Um, if we picked them up, yes. they should be heading where we were going. Yeah, yeah. it may be that like they, and it's funny because like this passenger terminal is going to get used, but it's sort of um, a Banana Republic kind of terminal, uh, passenger terminal. They'll go in and wait uh, for a ship to take them out, you know, and that's it. As far as uh, medium passage. Uh, now you have one low passage, I believe. So, um, anyone want to take bets on their survival? It's a, it's either die or live. Those are the only options on this one. I say live. I'll say live too. I'm an optimist. It'll get split. <laughs> 40, uh, well, it'll be a total of 50 credits and it'll get split. You know, whoever wins and loses. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, I'll go for live. Okay, I'll go for die. All right. <laughs> I'll pass. <laughs> okay, the doc is going to... He, he looks up for a minute and he's like, well, oh, so I die. I could lose 10 credits. And uh, <laughs> let's see. Okay, I think that passes. He got, he got an eight. So um, let's see. That means that uh, of 50 credits... Um, Books, Shipley, and Bellamy 
get uh, 17 credits. <laughs> All right. Nice. <gasps> Damn it, I never he, come out ahead on these. <laughs> he wakes up, <laughs> uh, and he's, you know, sick, vomiting, and, uh, you know, the doctor's like, Starting a starting an IV line, clearing him, putting in an airway through the nose, clearing everything out of. The, it looks like an emergency, but this is actually just what it looks like every time someone comes out of cold sleep. Um, and uh, yeah, anyways, they disembark. Uh, well, that's twenty five thousand credits right there for uh, three medium and one low. Yeah. Let me make sure I've got three mid, one low. Okay. So I'll just add that later. Now, um, yeah, anything else you want to do on 567908 in this bustling uh, metropolis? No, but no. <laughs> uh, uh, not no, but hell no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Stop me if I'm wrong, anybody. I don't know if anybody had any other ideas about walking in the Someone desert. Wants or to anything. go check out what's in that vending machine for me. I might appreciate it, but otherwise, no. I'll I'll go have a look in the vending machine oh, for okay. the poor guy. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Okay. He said. He got <laughs> what could go I wrong? Know. Yeah. Yeah. The first thing is doing a encounter roll. Five plus one per hour. You do not encounter anything. <laughs> uh, I'll get him a candy bar. I'll describe the candy bars. <laughs> do they have pork rinds? I hope the doctor is prepared. Do they do they have armadillo pork rinds? <laughs> yeah, if I had any sense, I wouldn't trust the the space gas station food. <laughs> the, it's the, all processed quite competently. The, you're co you're sure that's the case? Uh, although I, whether that it could be said that's actually still good for you or not, not no one. It'll probably pickle your insides, but it's not gonna. It's not gonna. You know, there's probably it is sanitary. And anyways, uh, vending machine. It's one of those things where no one has operated it in a long time. And this is clearly not what the inhabitants eat, uh, and most of it is gone. There are six rows of items in the vending machine that are still there. Uh, you asked if anything looks like a uh, pork rinds. Um, you probably don't know what pork is, but uh, let me see. Something salty with fat, high fat content. That's actually what it says on the packaging. That's like the flavor <laughs> it's listed. <laughs> Something there's, salty with high there's fat weird, content. There's, we, there, there's weird uh, truth and advertising rules on, on this. <laughs> <laughs> so there are six items. I can tell you what they are, but I but you you spot one. So I don't know if you're looking for something like uh, a rind from a fatty animal as a matter of fact and i'm i'm not i i rolled this right here i'm not i didn't make it up in fact that there is absolutely that and it now it comes in a a, a large lightweight canister like a like a big pill like this big and uh inside of it and you can see in a little window that there is uh, some kind of, and, and I like how, like, I don't know if you all have been to East Asia, but like the, the, the food, they like to show how they've tormented and slain the, the innocent animals on the front of the food. So it has like this cute picture of like, you know, this like happy go lucky th this mix between a snake and a, um, uh, cause it curls and a, uh, I don't know what to call what are what are pigs as a broader uh species what are they or not species swine but, is it swine yeah it looks like a cross between that because it, it it curves and it's like kind of like happy go lucky and it's on the cover of it and inside you can see how their chunks of fat have are curly just like they are and there's a bunch of curly waxy noodly things that are covered in like an oily kind of substance that's the best you can tell from the outside mm -mm. cool how many credits um just one credit nice 
I'll take ten. Oh, minus ten credits for ten canisters. Does that and... clean him? Does that clean it out? I, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> Have I seen these things before? It's... Yeah, you 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 buy all of them. No, you haven't seen yeah. them before. You all get right, ten get... cans of gork. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited. Uh, are, are you going to try one out? Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. You pop open a canister, and yeah. uh, and it just I like can almost taste it now. The, yes, the smell just wafts out of the canister, oh, and glorious. it's a good smell. That's what I was excited it to say. It it has a a a, a hint of lemon, Ooh. and just a slightly fermented beef. And when I say fermented, I mean like you know like a salted pork. Sure. Uh, but with like a like a, a zest, just a little bit of that it. kimchi edge to it. It is like that. It's like it's <laughs> kind of like how you have that savory, meaty taste uh, yeah. offset with like a pepper and a a a a a, 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 a sweet taste to it. Yes. Ooh. Who makes these things? Uh, is the, it McClellan? The brand? Yeah. <laughs> it's definitely McClellan. <laughs> it's absolutely McClellan. All right. We I mean, really, get one. this is what Lothak is needed in her diet. Yes, <laughs> right. I bet it is. I bet it is. Might be a little yeah. too oily, actually. But it, it, I don't know. It tastes like a like a mix between um, a uh, like lo mein and um, uh, like a. Um, uh, I'm trying to think. Uh, sorry, uh, it, the texture. Sorry, is somewhere between. The the consistency of beef jerky, but with the pliability of lo mein, but it does have that kind of savory sweet taste of like a Thai kind of thing. Oh, it's like perfect. It's good. It's perfect. Yeah. yeah. I, I just I shed a tear. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Perfection. And I, and I and I and I stop while I'm ahead, having bought ten of these things. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm ready to be praised when I get back on the ship. This is a find. All right, you get back on With board. Ten and like, they didn't have canned air. Would it come on? <laughs> you well, just wait, my friend. Just wait. I'll I'll, I'll hand him an, a pristine. Oh, nice. Still on, oh, still unpopped can. <laughs> Um, See for I, yourself. I, I'm impressed. It's, it tastes remarkably like beetle pig. Um, ah, yeah, beetle pig. Yeah. We ever learn what the names of those that that critter is called? He. It was mentioned what they're what they were called. They were called Griggs. That's what it was. Griggs. We got Gork. We got Gork, and we got Griggs. <laughs> Gork doesn't come from Griggs, though. I guess. No, absolutely not. <laughs> Okay. Beautiful. <laughs> Any other business? Uh, I can't. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Taking off. You take back off from um, five, six, seven, nine, oh, eight. Uh oh. We're calculating. Um, I would have liked to have calculated. I didn't mention it. Does it matter that I didn't mention it? It didn't happen. I I'll give two options uh, in the classical style of gaming. Either you must mention it, or you must establish an SOP in advance. And if you tell me an SOP, then I will always do it, unless you say, we're going to do what we usually do, except I do this this time. So that's... But otherwise, no. You must tell me if you're going to do stuff. Okay. Like, I, I assume, for example, right now, that you always... Because I did ask, uh, you were always in your vac suit, you're always armed, and everyone is always at their station whenever you're either uh, leaving a planet, arriving in a planet, about to jump, or leaving jump. Yeah. Um, so, all right. And everybody, somebody stop me if you disagree with this. I think from now on, SOP, when we come out of, of jump space for the computer, will be auto-evade and generate which will take up our computer's whole processing space. If we get attacked, we can switch out generate for maneuver. But we'll keep generate in for as long as it takes to generate a flight plan. And we should just have that ready to go, I feel like. I mean, you know. Yeah. Sounds good. It, it takes one about six and a half minute round um, where they can fire at you while you generate the flight plan. Well, you keep auto evade in. Yeah, 
Absolutely. And then as far as maneuver, uh, you'll it'll take another round to load yeah. it, and then you'll have maneuver. But then you'll have the flight plan, and I'll say you can jump at that point, essentially. You can well, we wouldn't be able available. to... We wouldn't be able to jump. I mean, I, I, what do you guys think? Should we do the, the generate on our on our way up from the spaceport instead? Because there's we can't actually jump until we refuel. So it's sort of maybe to state the obvious from my point of view, maneuver is does not include like literally just flying the ship. Like you can point the ship on a vector and it'll fly without maneuver. Is my thought. But maneuver means that you're able to like maneuver with, in case you need to for some reason. I would I would have a look at the rules on that because the, the game differentiates between auto evade and maneuver evade, which is a which are all different programs from the program that is called Sorry, maneuver. And, and yes, in addition, I don't mean to conflate that with <laughs> evading, but okay. just to, just to say it, it, the ship does not suddenly become entirely unflyable without maneuver. That that would be nonsensical to me, and I, I didn't think that it would, which is why I was saying we could do without maneuver. Yeah. Right. While while all we're doing is essentially flying in mostly a straight line towards the spaceport, but right. I couldn't th just because I can't think of a better thing to have unless we have passengers, which I'm remembering actually. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> SOP. Okay, yes, okay. Passenger SOP, which is just going to be SOP all the time, because in case we forget that we have passengers, it needs, to be, it needs to be auto-evade, anti-hijack, and maneuver. That's going to be SOP when we come out of jump. Um, okay. Um, and then do me a favor, and just I'll always assume you have those three software when you come out of jump. Um, and is that also what you're going to do as you're leaving the planet? Um, we have to generate the, fl we can generate the flight plan while we're landed. That's true. Yeah. And so I, I would also note that maneuver to me, and if you haven't noticed in one round, I believe you can re-enter orb, re-enter re an atmosphere in my opinion. Now, some would say that's not realistic or whatever, but I'm, I'm going to say that. Basically, if you can make it to atmosphere, you can enter it and hit the turf and, and around. Uh, so that's always an option if you can get there. So, okay. So, okay. Um, and then planet is auto evade, anti hijack, and maneuver. It'd be the same, right? Leaving the planet, yeah. Okay. And then when we have, and, and uh, we'd have to put navigation in at some point. Navigation can take the plate, like, navigation has to be in. You want to just do it right before you get the safe jump distance? Yeah, navigation and okay. jump one have the to be in. You guys um, have to remember, though, right? Because if you get in a pickle and you're like, well, why don't we jump? We generated our flight plan. I'll be like, well, you got to you gotta take a round and put in navigation. Yeah, so. yeah. And jump. Okay. Jump one. All right. So you start heading out from 567908. And let me take a quick look at some things. And we have no passengers, which means we can have... Navigate in there now. Which should allow Shipley to... luxury of it takes the usual five hours to get to a safe jump distance and you encounter nothing at all along the way um, this place is dead and so you swap it out uh, you know it takes about six minutes to swap the software out um, before you get to the safe jump distance and you have it ready so that uh, you're you're ready to punch it. Uh, before you do, um, let's see how the engines are doing. Oh my. Okay. That's so good. Yeah, there's something about the engine health. Uh, now, again, it's not going to matter until it matters. I also assume like a routine level of maintenance, so this isn't some kind of 
I'm not generating a plot thread from this. This is only, you can assume, ah, well, if we can get to Bowman and land at a starport, it'll be okay, right? But, like, if something happens, yep. that could tell, that could inform something. But um, it'll only matter if it matters. And uh, let's see. I think it's going to happen. <laughs> do you, what do you tell them? We'll get to Bowman. We'll fix this. We'll, we'll get into the garage. Everything will be fine. <laughs> I don't know if anybody looks over at uh, Marcello's uh, multifunction screen, his big CRT, but you can see like the, the lines of power disparity. And one of them is like spiking and going beep, 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 beep. And then the other one's like lower and, and like really kind of like stable. But then the other one's like this. <laughs> Uh, I can yeah. tell you what what Mag, what Bellamy is going to be doing for most of the week. Looking at the engine? Yeah. Well, I, I mean, that's Marcello's job. You want him to do that? We spend well, I got nothing else to do. <laughs> I guess everybody can look at it. I, I'll, I'll, I'll take a few <laughs> pot shots at, at the target, you know, at the virtual target before getting bored and, uh, and, and go over and just be like, ah, oh, whatever, I'm a good enough shot. <laughs> uh, what'd you say, Chapman? <laughs> That's funny. The whole the whole time it's like lopsided. The whole yeah. week, so everybody's like leaning <laughs> the entire week, yes. including in jump. It affects the gravimetric slightly. Yeah. <laughs> it is a gravity based drive, right? It's like a. By, it's all yeah. Grav by, by the end of the by the end of the week, you're like rubbing your neck. Like, what is going on? <laughs> Lower uh, back spend pain. Another one hundred credits on two more lessons. And uh, Shipley, if you could roll your nav check, please. Oh, boy. Okay. Pretty good. Okay. So, um, I assume... The new software is really helping. Nice, yeah. <laughs> we just need to uninstall and reinstall it. <laughs> <laughs> Turn it off and back on again. It's got one of those big switches, like yeah. a TRS-80 or something. <laughs> Makes loud whirring noises when when it's running. Um, okay, um, yeah, and eight. So let's see here. You arrive um, in the Bowman system after about per, about 166 hours uh, in jump. Uh, let's see here. So you were at 124. No, no, no. Yes. You were at 117. So you're now at 145. Day 145 of 1114. And I think... Hundred and forty five of eleven fifteen, you are one day from your bills coming due. And then you will be skipping. And so you'll arrive in Bowman. Um I have your software package. Uh what do you what do you do when you arrive in system? Scan is the first thing, and then we need to make contact with uh Captain uh, Bjorvi or whatever the heck is no Thorgelson, Thor, Thor, yeah, Thorgelson I think. So Thor. for for Shipley I have something this time I actually have like uh, what you would see on your screen from a two D display uh, of the Bowman right. system, and you appear. Let me make sure I have this right. Um, yeah. Now, this this doesn't sound as good as it is, and I'll tell you why. But you you arrive just outside the inner the inner ring, uh, seventeen hours from Bowman Prime. Um, that maybe doesn't sound super great because usually for a small body, you want to arrive just like a couple hours out. But in this case, uh, the Bowman system 
is a, uh, a massive series of uh, asteroid belts. There are two major asteroid belts. There is a, a large planetary belt and then two massive Trojan clusters, uh, or a Trojan and a Greek, a Greek cluster in, in Bowman Prime. So uh, this would be especially hazardous if you were to jump close to Bowman Prime, essentially. Uh, there are basically millions of planetoids in the solar system. Uh, and while they're far apart, you're jumping very large distances. So uh, you arrive right here about 17 hours out from Bowman Prime now. You have a, um, um, you don't get a 3D coordinate. You get a, um, <laughs> a bunch of stuff that you have to work on your own. An orbital period plus a date and a rate, essentially, for a, uh, a buoy that you're supposed to okay. intercept. Um, so I have to calculate the position based off that information. Yeah, you you think that the buoy is located uh, about ten hours away from Epsilon, um, and so you do a scan of the system, and you can see these massive, larger asteroids, um, and um, you have the uh, the UPP information. Uh, that you would have collected because you have um, because you have generate because you have generate mm -hmm. you would have the UPP so anyways uh, it would be uh, 10 hours uh, away from and you don't have to do math <laughs> this is just uh, I mean you can if you want you could do a squared plus b squared equals c squared or whatever or I don't know and figure out and then plus the acceleration and everything but uh but but uh, epsilon is uh currently about uh halfway in its its uh its orbital cycle from bowman prime and this buoy is about 10 hours out from epsilon so you probably have to go about um 15 hours out of system to get to the buoy <clears throat> um, remind me, there wasn't anything else we had to actually do in Bowman other than get this gun, correct? That's right. And they did say that it would take at least a couple of weeks to bolt the gun on. Okay, well, let's hope uh, our friend has some work for us. Okay, so what next? <laughs> and I mean, you know, hey, the, not just the captain. What what do you all think? Tell books. Tell me. I mean, you just uh, entered a uh, asteroid belt. You know that you're um, supposed to go to this buoy. The buoy uh, you hope will either be the location of this chop shop, or it will give you the location of the chop shop. But that's what you were given. You were given um, directions of of linking up with this buoy. Okay, and so how, I'm, can you repeat how far away we are from the buoy exactly? You're probably uh, 15 hours at 1G. Okay. Um, 15 hours. I mean, I say we just keep keep on making our way there. Okay. All right. I'm wondering what it is that we... we all of our free time doing not even just during situations like this but like <laughs> it's very much one of those like yeah it's one of the, definitely one of those like 90 percent of the time extreme boredom and 10 percent of the time terrifying <laughs> life-threatening <laughs> stuff books is writing a play Ooh. in his spare time <laughs> nice what's the title of the play um, he doesn't have a title yet. He he doesn't like to excuse me pick a title until it's complete. It's like a superstition thing. Yeah. Um, he's about seventy five percent done. Is it about the epic saga of the war between all of the space Vikings? 
That's in there. Yeah, all of it. It's about all of it. <laughs> Man. What's Just that big German epic Marcus. called? Um, like the big German epic. I can't remember what it's the, called. The Wagner one? The Rings of the Nibelung? <laughs> Yeah. Like, like books is over here making that for like, you know, this point in history and space <laughs> and the year fifty yeah, five hundred. Like extremely or like sophisticated, ridiculous, high production value choreography and props and stuff. Like he's making an Andrew Lloyd Webber production, except he's like gonna be on our ship and and the cargo base. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'll point some obvious things out. Maybe I. <laughs> Uh, I don't, as I mentioned in chat, I, I, I'm like not savvy with actual space stuff. So forgive me if I get some things wrong and also forgive me if this, I don't know if you find any of this interesting, but this may, maybe you'll be able to use this if something happens, but 15 hours pass and you don't encounter anything. Uh, there are two things here. Um, primarily this is actually what you're seeing here. On this chart is actually just this little inner area of Bowman Prime. And then the, the main portions of the asteroid, uh, you have the sun uh, itself, um, which is a, uh, a smaller red star, about half the size of our, our sun. And then you have uh, a gas giant that uh, the gas giant is... Um, closer to the sun than Jupiter would be in this case. And that is the only body. And then uh, around the gas giant is a planetary belt. Uh, and then you have like a massive um, asteroid belt around the whole system. And that whole thing mostly is just these concentric circles here, which you'll see here. So you have the Bowman solar system and Bowman prime. And then you have three zones, the nickel cadmium zone, the end zone, and that's where people mine predictably uh, metal asteroids. Uh, sometimes the uh, the metal will also contain, or the, the sometimes these harder asteroids will also contain really valuable uh, materials like radioactives, but it's more rare. An important thing to note is because of Bowman Prime's relationship to the sun, uh, the exposure to radiation even momentarily if anything occurs is utterly fatal if you get exposed when you're in the bowman system to radiation you're done if something happens so like if we if you get hit and it says hey you were so the the um the m drive generates a low energy field at all times uh and it maintains this uh electromagnetic equilibrium uh, and if that is destroyed for some reason or some way like if you just like you know uh, have a uh, explosive decompression or something and you lose that shielding everyone in the ship could just die from radiation so that seems important to note uh, and that's unusual here that's if you're close to Bowman Prime then you have further out what's called the mixed zone uh, it's mixed with stuff in the C zone, which is carbonaceous asteroids, which are gas and collections of things and water, and uh, people will collect uh, water and hydrogen, which is of much, much lesser value, but there's a lot more of it. Anyways, that's what's going on in the solar system, just in case anything comes up and you're able to use that information. You make it to the nav buoy, um, and you find it. I assume you have your sensors on. You're trying to find the, uh, once you get there. Um, and um, as soon as you arrive, um, it provides a faint one-way signal on a specific channel that you're given. Now, you were already given this information. Um, and, yeah, it basically is kind of like a, a handshake, like, you know, send me this code that you have. That's that's the that's the that's the signal that you get from the buoy. All right, we didn't come here for nothing. Uh, I assume that we got some kind of some kind of password from Bjorgelson, something that we can punch in there. Yeah, 
Okay. Uh, I assume that would be, uh, this actually it could be books or Marchell. I guess it'd be books though in this case, right? You're the signals officer, right? Um, yeah, yeah, I All could right. do that. Okay, uh, so uh, you send this uh, this uh, code uh, to the buoy, and uh, it takes about three minutes, and you receive a protected packet of information back. Um, and um, you can you you get some information as soon as you receive this signal. It comes through on like a secure. Um, uh, like a channel and you can tell that like two things right away this is digital if you tamper with it it indicates that you'll lose it or it'll be destroyed uh, additionally if the pressure sensors of the ship detect a change in pressure status it will also be destroyed uh, it is only useful once it comes into contact with a specific signal and it provides you um, coordinates, a, uh, a 3D coordinate. And um, the pressure, what I mean when I say a, a change in pressure, is your, your, your ship can detect, like if the cargo bay opens, right? Uh, right? Or if there's a change in air. Essentially, if anything comes in or out of the ship or anything tries to at any point, or if the ship blows up. Any, if any of that happens at all, uh, this will destroy itself. And anyways, as soon as you receive that digital packet, the buoy explodes. Um, all right. And this coordinate is, let me make sure I have this right. Um, 81 hours away. 81 hours. hours. <laughs> 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 and but we have the coordinates though so we don't need anything else from the exploding buoy or that's right this area okay well i guess we uh have a long trip on our on our hands three yeah. days i think we could probably watch through the lord of the rings extended movies once or so Anybody's up for like a, a crew viewing party. <laughs> Let's see. A nine. Oh boy. Um as uh at the end of day one, whoever is on third watch, um a uh you get a hail. Um who would be on comms and on the bridge at that time? To be whoever's like up late, if you will. I could do it. All right, books. You uh, you get a hail uh, from another ship. What do they do? They say like do they say something, or is it just like a, a electronic thing? It's a it's a hey, we're sending you a message. Please respond. You know, like you. That's okay. So I would. I would go over to the comms and I would say, who's, who's this? Uh, this ship hails you, uh, you sent, you received that message, uh, and this ship is about 450,000 kilometers from you. It, uh, let's see, 150,000 kilometers. You suspect that at 450,000 kilometers, you would have a um, about a two and a half minute delay. That's me fudging it. Um, and um, let's see. Uh, and what did you say you do? Sorry about that. I just wanted to give that information. I would basically ask them who they are without giving our call sign or giving any information yet. Um, so I would just try to see what information I could get, like what, what, why are they bothering us? Um, so I would kind of, in a gruff manner, say, "Who's this?" Something like that. 
Okay. They say um, <clears throat> it takes uh, another two and a half minutes, so five minutes pass, and uh, they are closer. Uh, you can tell at this point they are about um, maybe 300,000, 200,000 kilometers, and they say, this is the IISS siren. Please ident. They want you to send your transponder information. So at this point, I would uh, send a message out to the crew, you know, especially the captain, um, just letting him know that there's a situation and to, to wake up and, you know, yeah. come to the comp stack. <clears throat> IISS, we want to be on their good side. We're on their good side. We want to stay on their good side, so... You know. Yeah, so I would, uh, in that case, I would get back on the comms, and I would say, this is the Lady of Mercia. How, how could we help you? Okay. Uh, they, uh, it takes, uh, you know, that takes about two and a half minutes. You get a message back, so it all takes about five minutes. Um, and so now it's been about ten minutes, and they say, um, and they are closer. They are probably 200,000 kilometers. And they say, <clears throat> um, Lady of Mercia, um, we are doing a, a standard combat patrol. Uh, there's a, um, the Bowman system is a haven for pirates and criminals. Be, be careful out here. Uh, we need you to, um, uh, to, uh, to match V. And uh, we have a... Uh, a sensor suite, and we need you to send all of your information from your flight plan over to us. Like the, I'm sorry, a sensor suite specifically for um, uh, criminal warrants and for illicit cargo and things like that. Have we ever been through one of these before? Does this all seem totally normal? Uh, this does seem normal. This is something that could totally happen if you encounter, uh, and they're clearly a scout vessel uh, that's armed. Okay. You know, they have like one pulse laser, and um, they are scanning ships and contacting them. And and you know, you could probably do with a lot more of that out here. <laughs> but can I ask? Do we have any? We have a. Do we have a contract from the scout boss? Yeah, absolutely. This is okay. Well. Let's ask him. Let's agree to the match V and everything. But let's let's ask him for uh, a face to face meeting, and just maybe explain who we are and the fact that we're working for um, Anders. Is it Anders? Okay. Is that was his name. So was that his name? Yeah, and, sure. Yeah, Anders Kasari. Anders Kasari. Um, because, um, you know. I actually don't see a reason to hold back what we're actually doing here. These aren't... They're not part of the Navy. Like, the Scout Service is its own thing, so it's... Yeah. I don't know. What, what do you all think? I, I, I'm I'm sort of leaning towards being overly, sh like, sharing a little more than we might need to with these guys. And maybe, like, let them know we're not actually comfortable with telling you exactly where we're going because... We've got some unsavory allies, and we're trying to do some work out here. But uh, what do y'all think? I, I might be, I might be off base there. I think we hold that last part until they ask us about it specifically. Well, the thing is, That's they're, exactly ask, they're asking what I was going to say. Yeah, but they're asking about our flight plan, and our flight plan is about to lead us to what is probably an illegal chop shop. They just warned us about criminals. <laughs> we're about to go meet some criminals. To... <laughs> oh, that's terrible. We'll keep an eye out for them. <laughs> right, but they want us to share our flight plan. Yeah, we will. We will but then, I agree, I agree with you. Why plan. are we going there? And, you know, what? What? the only thing out there is a, a nest of scum and villainy. Why are you going there? Yeah, you know, I, yeah no. I have to generate a new flight plan. Chris, Chris has a good point. Basically, if you share your information, they'll know exactly where this hidden sword world or chop shop is. Uh, and they'll know you're going there. Yeah. And even if, they even if they don't, even if they don't know that it's there, we'll be telling them where it is, so that we, we which Bjorgolfsson will not appreciate if all of a sudden a scout, you know, somebody starts showing up. 
what if we say we're going there for like a super boring reason like i don't know like we're gonna do like a bunch of um humanitarian work and like not that that's boring in real life or anything but in the scope of this like we're gonna do something like that like but something really really just arduous and like I don't know, just annoying, and then maybe ask them if they want to join Wait, us. Can we say that we're surveying for a ast? Are there's this, there's an asteroid cluster out here, right? We can say we're on a survey uh, mission for um, I don't know, McClellan or something. They think there's a war out here. We're running a survey, well, and we are still technically. Oh no, we don't get paid for that anymore. He has no money for us to do uh, system well, surveys, right? It might be convenient to pretend he still does. But yeah, we shouldn't actually do work we're not being paid for. Anyway, we're going to have to just be prepared to improvise, I guess. But uh, we're going to have to think on our feet. But anyway, we can agree to we can agree to match velocity and everything. But can we ask? Uh, I think we should still. I'd like to ask for like a, a face-to-face with the captain. Okay, so let me make sure I understand the what's on the table uh you all are what what is what is it you're proposing and mainly i want to face to face with the captain ah okay so but, but otherwise comply with everything they've asked send the flight plans in the location no of no, the... no no i i <laughs> i don't want to do that sight unseen not that part okay no because then we'll be betraying bjorgelson well what about what shipley proposed where you like come up with a new flight plan right now and delay them long enough to generate one or 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 make one that's like you know a hundred thousand kilometers in a off where we're actually going and you know tell tell the shipley story what was your what was your suggestion again, Chipley? Just to make sure I understood it. Uh, that we have been hired by some mining company to run a survey on an asteroid cluster in the direction we're already headed, and then generate, if we can, a different flight plan that leads us, you know, in the same direction. So it looks like we could have been following it, but that doesn't lead to the pirate base. Like maybe we change directions a little further on or something. Okay, I'll say that okay. you can do that. It's just going to take one round before you have that information. So. You'd have to send a message and delay them for some reason. Well, there's already a delay of a couple minutes going back and forth between the messages. Yeah, you would have to. So they've to. they've said, "Hey, send us your info," and you'll be like, "I am not going to send you the info." And then well, after another round, okay, here's the info. They they wanted yeah. to match V with us first, right before the info dump happens. Mm -hmm. So we can. That's they're still. Well, we can say, yes, yeah, sounds good. And then, like, when they ask, where's the info, it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We wanted to match V first. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, what do you think about that, Books? You're on. You're the comms person, so. Can you sell that? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, Excuse okay. me. Yeah, that, that sounds good. All right. Throw me your pitch. What do you say in the message? So I'm basically going to say that... Um, we want a face-to-face -face meeting and like we'll we'll discuss that more face-to-face -face. about like we're not going to give the exact flight plan is that is that correct no is that what, I'm, what is it <laughs> i think we just decided against that we're gonna we're gonna send them we're gonna say yes we're matching v now collating that data for you or something like that you know we're gonna buy ourselves a few minutes to cook up a fake flight plan. Yeah, we're we're not gonna ask for the face to face, I guess. Oh, okay. So we're not gonna do the face to face. Okay. I thought we were we were just changing the. Well, if if Shipley's plan works, we shouldn't need to. If they question us later, we can say, "Hey, uh, would you mind having a face to face?" But maybe we'll just eat it until then. Okay. All right. Yeah. So I would. I would. You know match tell them that we're matching um you know matching the uh the v and then i guess just try to stall them a little bit um right is that the idea so we so we could contort a fake flight plan 
Yeah, yeah. we're working with this old computer, you know. Take a little while. Okay. Um, all all right. right. So should I say what I like? What I would actually say? Are you ready for that? Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. All right. Sorry about that. We're uh, we're matching matching speed now, and you'll have to bear with us. Uh, you know, you know these systems. They don't uh, they don't always run like they should. Um, so I'll get that. But right you know over. that the uh, you know that the engines are kind of like on the fritz. You yeah, know we've that, had right? to like constantly rewrite our power between systems. Trip, don't say that. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, uh, it's a mess. It's a mess. All right. Uh, you should ask them for. Uh, right now. You should ask them to refer uh, refer us to a good garage. <laughs> Five minutes pass, um, and you get a message back, and they say, "All right, Lady of Mercia, uh, we're coming a beam." Uh, and um, by this point, they're like a hundred thousand kilometers, and they say, um, "Hey, um, we we need you to comply immediately. Uh, this is this is imperial law. Uh, please send us the information uh, promptly." Is it ready? Yeah, yeah. Are you ready? Oh, go ahead. I don't know. Am I? Has it been enough time? Yeah, yeah, within a round, within six minutes, you'll have the the flight plan. So you need to delay like one more minute, I guess. You take me. Okay, I give you a quick sign, like, add, like five minutes, five zeros at the end. <laughs> uh, my question is: Do you also want to try to head toward what you think is a uh, an asteroid cluster? I was hoping she would, or he would pick a good one. Uh, <laughs> Can't we see that on our scanners? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can. Now, I, I should clarify, I guess, uh, whole clusters and giant planetoids. So there's Delta, you can see there, Gamma. Those are like planetoids and moons and stuff. like Or planetoids, really. Big asteroids. So, um, essentially, you could go toward Zeta, Delta, Gamma. And uh, currently, Delta is... Right here on its orbital path. Uh, gamma's on the opposite side, though. Um, beta's right there. And Zeta is over here. So I guess Delta is on your fly on your current path. It will end slightly off. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Uh, we go. Yeah, I, I could hear you. All right. So, yeah. Um, yes, Shipley, you can uh, create a flight plan. Uh, where do you think you want to go? Um, well. Uh, okay, so we have the... We're heading towards Zeta, right? But... The orbit of Epsilon is between us and them. Can we, can our new, um, our new trajectory be toward Epsilon? Or uh, do I have those mixed up? Yeah, no, uh, Epsilon is, uh, actually you were recently there, uh, close to it anyways. Uh, Delta is here. Sorry, I, sh I, did, I guess I didn't ping it. I, <laughs> it's probably just like just there, say, there. We, we need oh, more than just the orbit. We need those current I'm locations. Sorry. I did. I, I, I was, I think I did the thing where I was like, point, I was like, it's right there. Like, there, like y'all could see it or something. <laughs> I'm so such a dummy. I'm sorry. Anyways, I, I suppose to Delta. So like you all are headed, um, like here. Okay. Uh, and okay. Delta is currently here. All of the other larger planetoids are probably off your path. Uh, you'd be turning around and going the other direction, or you'd be heading towards Bowman Prime. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, so you just okay. pick the closest cluster to... Yeah. Right. Like Delta's the obvious choice. Okay. All right. So, um, and then uh, books. Uh, so... Some additional time passes. Let's see, that's six minutes. Um, and then what do you, what do you, do you just send them the information then? Toward the yeah, if, okay. we, if we have the, uh, if we have it, yeah, I would send it over to them. All right. I just so, 
yeah, save so, out of out its way. So two things happen. Um, I they request like all of your transponder information. Okay, who's the Lady of Mercia? Your flight plan, stuff like that, and um, so you send that over. And um, at this point, you all have waited like around. Okay, so two minutes later, it's been twenty something minutes now. You get another message, and uh, they're like, uh, "Lady of Mercy, uh, comply immediately, or you'll be uh, will be required to board you." And then, like uh, two and a half minutes after that, because they get the message like two minutes later, so two and a half minutes later, you get another another message that says, um, "Disregard." We had, um, I think you were at. Um, Flamarian? Yeah, you were at Flamarian when all that went down, I think. Um, I had friends on that ship. We'd like to escort you to your asteroid. We can go a little bit out of our way, if that helps. Time to go do some scanning. They're trying, they're trying to be like, they're like thankful. Nice. <laughs> um... <laughs> You know what? Uh, That's just great. Tell them it was all in a day's work. Um, we 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 respect the mission of the patrol, and uh, and 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 we want them to go and uh, keep on about their business. We don't want any special treatment. All right. What do you all think yeah, about that? Absolutely. Yeah. Go ahead. I like that idea. Okay. I, I think that's a good idea. All right. So you send that message back, uh, and then they they just send you an acknowledgement, and they say, and they send you uh, some some info. Um, and they give you the locations of where they have heard that there are potent there is potential pirate activity. And is one location familiar? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Can't imagine uh, why. <laughs> well, uh, you know, maybe books. Ask them if they know if there uh, any uh, you know any job opportunities popped up in Bowman <laughs> recently. Or, or are those gonna? Is there gonna be overlap between those and the pirate stations? <laughs> uh, they they tell you, hey, if you stop by, um, if you come by, um, what they call Alpha Garrison. Uh, if you come to Bowman Alpha to Alpha Garrison. We will absolutely try to find some jobs for you. I don't know if it's something that would be useful for the Lady of Mercy. We don't have a lot of cargo, but um, we've got a small squadron here, and we we'll, we will we will work with you for what you've done for us. Uh, and the other thing that they give you is the locations of uh, where they have heard from some ships they've captured. Of high value, um, high value asteroids or claims. These are ships that were impounded, so they were never able to turn in their claims. That's going to be us in a couple of weeks if we're not careful. <laughs> <laughs> so I assume you continue on this path for a while, otherwise, they're just going to see you at least for 600,000 kilometers or so. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, they, yeah, we should wait until they're completely out of what we know. Let's ca let's be careful, right? Let's calculate their trajectory, their speed, and wait until we know we're out of their sensor range before, as opposed to them being out of ours, or make our best know, guess. Not, let's just check out this this little asteroid cluster. Why not? Like you know, maybe it's pretty. <laughs> you can do that if you want. Uh, you could head towards Delta. Really and... sell this this bluff. <laughs> Do you all want to try to do that? That will take you another twenty-four hours. No, I don't. I don't. I. I'd rather. <laughs> every, day, every day. Every day. DVDs. You know. Yeah, yeah, I think. By the way, technically, uh, you are now skipping, unless yes. you spend all of your fun. I don't even think you have enough funds. Maybe. I think we do. I think we do. But essentially, you would just Ooh. blow all oh. your funds almost. Uh, no, I. I don't think we do. Now that I'm looking at them. No. Yeah, because you would have to have twice the number of players almost. You, you're like two-thirds of the way there, I think. And that's yeah. if you spent all your money. 
Now, this wouldn't happen. This doesn't matter until you make it to a starport anyways. It's not some kind of weird wireless thing or something. You get to a starport, and then in good faith, after the money's due, you send out the payment. But uh, so far, it's looking like you're going to land, and you're going to start skipping. So anyways, um, so you're not... You're just going to try to exercise prudence, but otherwise you're going to try to get on the original flight path? Okay. Okay, so uh, this takes into the second day. And you encounter nothing. Uh, you make it back onto your original flight path about a half a, day's, a, half a day later. And uh, so now it's going to take three and a half days. This is the third day. And you encounter another ship. Oh. <laughs> and it sends you a, a message like, hello there. And asking to speak sends you like a, uh, a secure message, like a hail, you know. Oh boy. Um, I guess. I hope it's I, not pirates. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it is. <laughs> um, Why? Because if it is, we're close enough to where our friends are at that it might be our friends. Uh, yeah. Maybe. But um, I think yeah. I would say, you know, greetings. Uh, please identify yourself. They say, this is the rascal. Whom are we speaking? They're a 200 ton free trader. And I look at the captain, the rest of the crew. How do you guys want to play this? Ah, friendly... Asteroid scanning ship, I guess. We'll stick with that story. I mean, you could always have fun with it, we are. since that seems Just... to be <clears throat> the tradition between travelers is trolling each other. Okay. I wouldn't want to pretend this to be pirates like this happened to us before, but I don't know. Just be like, thank you, caller. You're on the air. <laughs> <laughs> Pizza. What, uh, should we say the actual ship name, or should we make up something? You would no, have I'm, to. You, we're the rest. You would have to turn off your transponder <laughs> in yeah, order to, I mean, to hide it. Oh, okay, yeah. At this Which point, you can it's do. Already... I don't want to do that. I mean, that's just me. I, I don't know how y'all feel about it, but no, I agree. I don't. I don't want to do that. We could just be asteroid scanners. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I guess I would say, well, hello. You're uh, you're speaking to the Lady of Mercia, and. Uh, we're out here just scanning some at asteroids, you know, trying to make an honest day's work. Uh, what brings you out here? Oh, how about that? We're this all. This takes about twelve minutes or whatever. Um, we're claim hunters too. We got our. Um, oh God, what's it called? Um, They use a, um, usually what they do is they work in teams, so they call it a, a seeker, a J, a J scout. They say, uh, we got our J scout out here for our, uh, for our little, for our little concern. Kind of surprised to see somebody else out prospecting, uh, Delta. Hey. We um we got our lead, you got yours. Best of luck out there finding your load. I see any cool rocks lately? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do fellow asteroid scanners. <laughs> you <laughs> you you know we wouldn't tell you if we did. You know how it goes. Uh <laughs> those rascals. Hey, listen. <laughs> the rascal. Hey, listen. The be careful out here in Delta. We, we've seen a, a couple of sword worlders. 
Oh no. Tell him we oh, said no. hi. Oh boy. Yeah. <laughs> appreciate the uh appreciate the heads up. All right. You be safe out there. Yeah, you too. All right. <clears throat> this is the third day and you enter Alright, you encounter nothing on the third day, and by day three and a half, you reach uh, your intended 3D coordinates. There are um, uh, spaces vast, and so you will not see anything uh, unless you try to either scan it or you can try to transmit this uh, in a non-directional or omnidirectional signal. And, and try to find it that way. You either need to announce yourself actively or you need to try to scan and use your sensors. But your sensors on your free trader are not great. They are small for this type of thing. Uh, <clears throat> let's move as close as we can. Um, okay. I mean, uh, I think it's probably better to move close and try to scan than to just announce on a broadband ping. Okay, you do that. Um, and then you get hailed by another ship. Oh boy. Putting you to work today, buddy. <laughs> This, uh, this ship is about um, 11 o'clock from your uh, position on a similar plane, sim similar to the orbital plane of Delta, and um, it is, uh, its vector indicates that it's coming towards you, um, and, uh, and yeah, and, and it hails you, and, but it is 500,000 kilometers away. Okay. Um, so I think I would stick with my my normal script, and uh, you know, just say uh, greetings, greetings, friend. Who do I have the pleasure of speaking to? You send that back, and all of a sudden, uh, the next a couple of things happen next. Um, you get a. Uh, Weapons lock on. You can tell. Pulse lasers. Oh, that's our friends, all right. And uh, and you hear something in in Old Norse, or a reconstruction thereof, thousands of years from now. Um, that uh, you know. Uh, does anybody speak Old Norse? No one here got that language. I don't think anybody. Sp probably Book speaks it. We just say Book speaks it. He's got an intelligence of twelve. You automatically speak everything. <laughs> Um, hey, I, uh, then I also speak it. <laughs> you have Other an intelligence of 12? Yeah. Holy smokes. Yeah, you guys got like eidetic memories and speak 12 <laughs> languages and everything. Okay, so yeah, you both uh, understand this. It basically says, uh, I, hope you're, I hope that you are ready to die. That's what oh. they say? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, nice. that it just, you know, you've announced yourself and entered their space and they're ready to fight. All right. Could you tell them Bjorgelson's expecting us? <laughs> <laughs> um, we're, uh, like good warriors, we're always ready to die, but you better be ready for the vengeance wrought on you by our friend Bjorgelson. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I go ahead, books. Yeah, yeah what, what um, do you think? Yeah, I mean, I could. Should we, should we actually mention Bargolson? You guys think? Uh, yeah, I think it's the only thing that's saving us from death. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. Yes. I just wanted to make sure. Um, so I would say, ready, ready, but uh, but not not willing. Um, and I don't think Bergelson would be very happy if that happened so why don't you uh why don't you take it down a notch okay two things happen about um about six minutes later uh the lock goes away 
and um, and then about 30 seconds after that you get a message and it says Bjorgelson's an idiot but he still works here so follow us and uh, match V and they uh, they start heading towards you that's what initially happens Well, he ought to evade in, but uh, otherwise we might as well go with them. That's why we're here. Okay. Uh, they get close enough. They get to about 100,000 kilometers. This takes, I don't know, 10, 20 minutes or something, and then uh, match V, and um, they lead you uh, up to a place, and then it you get another message from a, a station, and this is an asteroid. Um, it... Um, Gives you um, instructions to land. It's slow. It looks like this uh, this asteroid. Um, I can't I can't remember the term on a solar system level. It always faces the sun. Uh, so you come in uh, with it facing the sun, and uh, and you dock. Um, the dock here is um, everything on the hangar bay is in zero g no gravimetrics and no air and then they have the lock the air locks right after that so you actually if you're going to exit your ship you actually have to uh go in your um back suits is there any danger of radiation uh exposure here not this far out uh bowman prime if you were there that would be a major hazard it would be completely unsafe to do that um, let's see here. So you uh, exit the ship. Let's make sure we got our contract and our card and all of our good stuff. You see a bunch of people. Uh, you see like some heavy weapon emplacements, uh, similar really to uh, to what you had jury rigged in the in your own cargo bay. Um, and uh, kind of pointing out in case anything like there were landing craft or anything if they had tried to board the station and you see guards uh, in vac suits and uh, the vac suits are all patchwork and covered in tactical gear and modules and stuff like that and they've got uh, uh, they've got uh, laser weapons um, and um, you eventually enter through uh, pressurization uh, through a pressurization chamber, and um, you see not Bjorgelson, but uh, but Borvai comes out to greet you, and in a very articulate uh, Anglic, he says, um, "Our old friends." It's good to see you again, I suppose. You know that if you ever speak of this location, they will hunt you down and kill you. Well, we've been successful so far. <laughs> Very well. Well, um, we'll get right to work. We have the pulse laser. The Voden's eye is not here. Neither is Captain Bjorkelson. But, um, it, I think, will take us two standard weeks, um... To get the uh, to get the uh, the pulse laser attached to your ship and tested. And uh, standard weeks. Is Bjorgelson due back soon? I'm afraid not. I could. Um, uh, they're doing a nearly suicidal attack on a frankly imperial uh, facility. If you. Uh, a, a scout listing post if you would like to join them and I would emphasize suicidal uh, but that is an option we do have weapons and gear if you'd like to join them that would feel wrong somehow yeah not until the this gun installed wait what'd you say Shipley I said not until at least we have the gun installed he smiles. He says, uh, "Alternately, we can get you a, a, a taxi, Panos. We can we can we can fly you out to uh, um, uh, Koenig's Rock." 
what's at Koenig's Rock? Um, a whole bunch of desperate, starving belters that are scrambling over each other for the next claim, and one greedy mega corporation that's trying to take it all for themselves in a war that's about to break out between the two. Oh, good. Is it McClellan? Uh, LSP is the name of the company, I believe. Oh, uh, uh, okay. Sounds delightful. Are they rivals with McClellan? Hmm. Probably so. I, I don't really know. I'm, I'm afraid that I'm not familiar with those kind of politics. Uh, it seems as if um, they must have edged out other companies and competition in this system. Everything in this system is LSP this, LSP that. It's possible they have some sort of agreement with uh, with the Sector Duke or something, but uh, um, those are all Imperial things. Perhaps uh, it would be useful for me to know this, but uh, I'm afraid I can't help there. Ooh. Well, friends, we ain't got a ship for two weeks. We can hang around here twiddling our thumbs or... Maybe see if we can scare up a job for ourselves out there. I like that idea. Let's do it. <clears throat> Alright, so how much does the taxi cost and how, when, is, when is it coming? <laughs> how often does it make that round? We can get you out of here in two hours. No, so. I mean, uh, if, we, if we needed to get back here how mm. would we do that that's another thing we'll give you a uh, some rendezvous instructions and some uh, some challenge and response that you would give the pilot it would happen um, probably once every day or two and there's pilots that do this kind of thing regularly I guess yes uh, the company's name is uh, Ling Standard Products, L-I-C. Looks like they are... Hmm. Some sort of mega corporation in the Imperium. As far as I can tell, they usually specialize in manufacturing, drive systems, work at shipyards. I don't know what they're doing out in an asteroid belt, but... They have a bunch of uh, belt, uh, a bunch of mining platforms they operate out here. Maybe they want to build a new shipyard here. Possibly. Well, <clears throat> I guess we'll take the taxi. Unless there's anything else you suggest us to do around here that could make us a few credits. Because uh, we... I gotta tell you, my friend, we're behind on our payment coming out here. Well, um, I'm not sure if we can help with that, but I do know one person you could contact. Uh, we could send a friendly word with you. I'll warn you, uh, this should come as no surprise, but we're not friendly with the Imperials or with the companies that are their dogs. Um, but uh, some of the local independents favor us, probably for that reason. And uh, we do have one former Imperial citizen who owns a smaller outfit here, uh, a R. Gazriatus. Uh, if you're interested in work, you could contact him, and we could send a message with you. And with he's our, on... He's in Koenig's Rock. I mean, we might as well. Can't promise we'll necessarily look him up, as uh, you understand, we... Uh, we don't we don't mind being imperial dogs ourselves from time to time, as I'm sure you know. None of my business. <laughs> I wanna Yet. ask real quick. <laughs> um Borvai, he's not a like like natively a sword worlder, right? Like he was like converted into it because he was like their technician beforehand. He is um in the Sword World's Confederation, but he was not an Astara, Astara 
what do you call it? You know, he wasn't one of the religious. Asatru. Asatru, thank you, right. yes. Uh, and now he is. He did, He converted to that, and he's like a true believer now. I wonder about that career path. Maybe, like, how viable is that? <laughs> <laughs> it's totally viable. Kind of if you want. Yeah, if you guys want to be space Vikings now, they do some pretty gross stuff. So, I mean... But... I mean, they just do the murdering. I mean, I'll just say it. Like they, you know, <laughs> they they do some murdering. So, yeah. but they pull uh, a number six. A little bit of murdering. Yeah, they pull a number six on them. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, you guys can let me know if you want to become space Vikings. That's totally uh, I, uh, Pirates of Drunex campaign now. <laughs> I, I, we we've we've got a strange inn. But uh, I'm not necessarily in, in favor of, of that. I'd like to be able to defend ourselves. It's better to make friends. It's nice to make friends with them. Which I guess we did at least with one guy. Yeah. Um, okay, so so then let's maybe we'll agree to take that contact, but but we'll, we'll we'll just I'm also interested in trying to talk to LSP, you know, and and just see what's going on at Koenig's Rock. All right, what what do I mean, I suppose big options here first, and then I want to hear from everybody. One option is you could just wait. You could literally just wait here uh, for, for two weeks. Uh, the other option is they'll take you to Koenig's Rock. A third option is they're like, yeah, you could just join us, and you can join the fight right now if you want. Uh, um, Books, what do you think? Um, I think we should just either wait or go to Koenig's Rock. Um, now, um, if I had to pick one, I would say go to Koenig's Rock. All right, Shipley? I'm for Koenig's Rock. We're broke. We need some money. <laughs> All right, Marcello? <laughs> I mean, I guess Koenig's Rock is where we can possibly find work, but uh, how much can we do in two weeks? That's my question. Yeah, I'm actually rethinking my Koenig's Rock opinion I'm I'm thinking awesome. of it in terms of the game itself. I bet because two a, weeks is enough time to drum up a revolution uprising among the Belters. <laughs> See, that's the thing, right? <laughs> but We're let's speed run uh, a little uprising among the worker class. See, I'm I'm thinking about our future, both as the as a, as a role playing group <laughs> and as a and as a ship's crew. If we stick around and cause all kinds of trouble for one faction or another here before we even have our gun and before we have to go to Squalia where we could get work in Squalia that would end us up in the Bowman Arm again trying to do something for the dude in Squalia while we investigate that situation I feel like we could be creating a bad bed for ourselves to lie in if we that's one that's one element and the other element is there's part of me that kind of wants to get on to the stuff that we've already got stacked up to do, and if, even if that means skipping for longer, I would like, I, I kind of, as a player, would like to get to that stuff. So that's that's my take on it for now. Because this this two week jaunt to to Koenig's Rock could end up being like two months of of sessions if it turns into like an event, which is not a bad thing. It's fun, but it's like. It's like the walking into an end and putting your blinders on problem in D&D. And it's just like, nope, nope, nope. Don't talk to anybody. I don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, that's all. I, I won't press it too hard, but uh, that's kind of, I'm kind of waffling on Koenig's Rock. Yeah. I mean, uh, in terms of game terms, uh, uh, it is a matter of like, you could start an adventure and that might last three sessions because if you remember rally, the thing about rally is time didn't actually pass. Uh, game time passed, like our time passed, but in rally, you were only there like 48 hours or something. Um, and so that could happen. You could get involved in something and it could take time. But I mean, that's also what we're here to do is to just like travel through no space doubt. and it's going to be yeah. fun no matter what. And we're going to be screwed no matter what. <laughs> No matter um, which, uh, be sweet. Now, now Chapman has uh, has already declared that he wants to be a space Viking. So I did not. I'm, I'm, not, <laughs> I'm not that resolved on it. <laughs> if I'm going to Curtis Rock and being judicious in what we choose to engage in. All right. Sounds like we're gonna go there, but then.
probably exercise some, you know, caution and see from there, you know. Okay. So, the taxi is available in about an hour. Uh, and it takes you to Koenig's Rock. Uh, you get instructions. Can we, st can we stipulate that we're carrying all useful gear? Like, do we need to... Because we're going to be gone from our ship for a while. Like, we need to make sure we're, we got what we need right. with us. So right. All the frozen chicken nuggets. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely all all remaining eight canisters of the uh, gork rinds. Yeah, if right. any of yes. you, if any of you get on the right. shuttle... Yeah, I was going to mention dog. Lady asked for some. I, I forgot to mention that. Wait, she Bjorvi's... needs her back suit because the radiation killer. Bjorvi's, Bjorvi's pr probably a good dog man, right? He can take <laughs> care of Lady for us, maybe. Bjorvi, Bjorvi will agree to take care of the dog if you wish. Uh, it's up to you. She did, I forgot to mention that Lady absolutely sniffs your hands and your, your suit and stuff when you come in after you've popped open the canister and wants food. But, uh, but anyways... Um, if anyone gets on the taxi and doesn't have their armor and weapons, uh, any Borvi will immediately be like, you are a fool if you go to Koenig's Rock and aren't armed. I, I will warn you of that. Um, and also, uh, if you do want to meet Mr. Uh, Gazriatis, uh, you will have the, the rendezvous set up for you at a place called the Rock Rats Bar. That sounds promising. We'll either get information, or we'll get in a gunfight. Yep. Or we'll lose a lot of money gambling. Alright. So, we're um, all of the above. Oh. This is actually <laughs> a, uh, a city crawl. I have a whole city map of a giant asteroid that you can explore. Ooh. So, um... Ooh. Yeah, uh, you enter from the port hangar into the entrance lock. And uh, you come through a board looking and basic customs. Now these customs, they really don't care, okay? And like you, do, you don't see like a like a scanner or anything. There's just a couple of guards, and it looks like they're here to just maintain some semblance of order. And they really don't even seem to be checking anything. Everybody just kind of walks back and forth from the entrance lock to their ships and stuff, and people doing cargo, and it basically does not seem like a customs. However. There is a sign, uh, and it's like, um, LSP, uh, your, your friend in space, or something really cheesy. That's just, just, just something really, really aw saccharine and awful. And then, but then it's like, security insurance plan available now for, uh, let's see how much security insurance plan is. Um... Go back here. Uh, but you don't have a, a, a ship here anyways currently, but it's uh, 500 credits per week. And you see that there are people signing up for this. And uh, LSP mercs are actually uh, a bunch of low-paid guards are, are actually in vac suits guarding ships. And you also see... Yeah, we don't need this stuff. Yeah, you, you see a bunch of... Um, let's see. Some... A, a hotel... First of all, you see some residences that are stacked on each other. Some of them are carved out from the rock, and then a bunch of stuff is added onto it. Uh, and they're just kind of ramshackle and, and stacked on top of each other. There are port offices, including the Starport Authority, where you would file flight plans and stuff. Uh, there's a bunch of other admin offices here, uh, and the office that manages the warehousing. And then there's a, uh, an area ahead uh, that continues in in the rocks, and it's just like this place is a maze. You can see ahead that there's just like honeycombs into a, a maze of dif different pathways, and uh, there's even like 
little um, scooter air car type things and people are doing deliveries and it's just uh, it's just chaos all kinds of businesses being had so going around the table uh, Klaus what, what do you all what do you think you ought to do well well, this rendezvous went what hours of the station time is this guy uh, supposed to be occupying it compared to what time it is uh, you would need to go to a um, a bar in a place called the strip and um, it uh, is in like two hours is when this rendezvous would happen Um, yeah, my opinion is we, we should probably just head straight straight there and, and scope out the, the scene on our way. Uh, get, a, get a sense. I'd like to get a sense for the presence of LSP. You know, I want to see how pervasive they are here. Like, do they, is the place, I mean, you say, you know, it's apparently very low security, but... They might have their own security, their own little warehouses and stuff like that. I'm just looking to Absolutely. see you know, the offices. Uh, yeah, yeah, totally. You make a little, you make a little circuit here, just in the warehousing. Make an admin check. Now you make that check. I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna keep going. Books. Is there anything as you come in that you want to look for? Anything you want to do? And what do you, where do you think you should go next? Um, excuse me. Sorry. Um, I think books would like to I think books wants to see the local cuisine okay uh, that would be in the strip um, there are no restaurants here let me see what no you restaurant. Okay. With my see. admin skill that I think that mid comes an 8 uh, an 8 okay you can tell that uh, LSP is kind of like the what do you call it? Um, what did you call what do you what they used to call those places where like a a, fact, a factory town where basically you yeah, know the, the company the, store the company yeah so like you know the there's LSP which is this giant organism and then there's all sorts of little factions even within LSP so there's like LSP security and LSP hydroponics and uh, they're providing a bunch of different services uh, and then some of it is independent or some of it presents itself as some kind of authority you can see that there really is no authority there's essentially two things going on you got all the people here and then you've got LSP and then LSP has lots of little operations, and you can even get a sense sometimes that even those, in, even those operations within LSP, you get some sense that they don't always get along, and that there's some some uh, uh, competition. Uh, so as you pass here, just to uh, answer to the books thing, uh, this path here you can see in the rock, you can hear a humming noise. And uh, this long line of stuff here are hydroponics vats where they're growing food. Uh, this is a lift. Um, this, this is like a whole mega city inside of an asteroid. So I'll describe some of the stuff you can see here um, and it'll answer Books' question. This has a sign that says the Koenig's Merchant Association. Um, this says... Uh, Ah, bar and casino. Uh, in fact, this one right here is the Rock Rats bar. So, and then you've got the pawn shop. Um, and then you got like a bunch of businesses that have sprouted around the side of the pawn shop and some of them are closed. Like you got like a same day loan service and like a, like a laundromat. And, I have a question. And there's um, more there's more bars and casinos around here, and then there's like junk stores. Okay, so that's what you're seeing on the strip. Go ahead. Can I okay. can I make a can I make a streetwise roll and well, combine well, it with Let me give everybody else a chance first. Let me go around the table and see what everybody else wants to do. Um, 
so Chapman, when, is there anything you want to look at or when you first come on the station? Anything you're looking for? Yeah. Firstly, I have a medium range communicator. Would that be good enough for us to keep in contact with each other if we split up? You can absolutely. Okay. I'm heading up the pawn shop. <laughs> remind me of that. I think we're going to run out of time, but remind me of, of uh, the. Yes. <laughs> absolutely. Write that down. Okay. And then uh, what about. Uh... Let's see, Marcello. And you guys yeah, could... Uh, Marcello, oh, right. uh, and Marcello uh, has kind of, kind of really had it with being on uh, on a ship for so many days. Just really wants to check into our uh, LSP hotel, go down to the uh, LSP lounge, and get LSP bourbon. Okay, um, you're gonna you're gonna go to take the, some, take the a, hotel. Take a sh take a shower. Yeah. And uh, and it is the hotel is owned by. Now, do you guys want to stay at the hotel, or do you want to stay somewhere else? It is owned oh, by what LSP. Are our options. Oh, sure. Um, let's see Sleeping here. Sleeping out on the streets. Okay. Um. Let's see. No store. This is awesome. It's like all a, it's like a junk town. I have like like two or three hundred different locations in this uh, asteroid. Um, tons of bars, tons of restaurants, different shops, a whole bunch of weird stuff. Uh, <laughs> you got a pet store. Uh, oh, we can stock up on dog food. Places to buy weird um, gadgets and like equipment for weird things uh and gadgets for mining uh so i've checked and i can say that is the, actually the only hotel perfect yeah. perfect so there you go okay so you are <laughs> staying at the lsp hotel it's called something else i don't know what it's called off the top of my head but um but it is exactly as you described okay so you check in the hotel and you do that uh shipley what are you doing i want to look around and see uh if there's any other travelers about, we know there's at least some of them doing scouting, but I want to see if there's anyone, I don't know, if there are any travelers, and if there are, maybe I can strike up a conversation and get some rumors or something. Okay. Uh, let's see here. So you look around the bars. Travelers are always, that's where you go. That's where you talk uh, traveling. And there's good news and bad news about this. Uh, some of these places, you look in and the bars are kind of tight, um, as is necessary on an asteroid uh, settlement like this. And these people are armed. It's obvious to you that some of these bars are specifically for hiring mercenaries and hired guns and stuff. There's an entire business about shooting people around here. And uh, some of them... Um, you don't really find a bar specifically for travelers. Um, you do find a cargo broker who, uh, the broker specifically works with travelers. Uh, and the reason for this is that when you look in the bars here, there's a bar called Gunnies, uh, which does kind of bill itself as like a, you know, macho kind of like, yeah, we are like mercs and that's exactly what we do here. And then, um, and there's a place called Benigers, uh, the Burroughs Burrow, uh, and those are a bunch of local workers. Um, and anyways, probably the closest thing to a traveler's bar would be Koenig's Landing. Um, this takes you several hours to find this place, though, and ask around. So I will actually probably do that next time. I'm going to make a... Would anyone go with Shippy, Shipley to Koenig's Land? Absolutely, yes. Okay. This happens the next day, which we'll get to the next session. Uh, but, um, yeah, this 
don't let me forget. It's called Burroughs, or I'm sorry, it's called um, Koenig's Landing. And it is in um, the Undertown. And um, yeah, it's a, it's a place a little more friendly to outsiders. So, all right, let's say Shipley and then Klaus. Um, well, I just, what all I wanted to do was as, as I'm walking around and looking, and then as, as I'm walking around with Dipley, I want to be, uh, getting a sense of the, or the organization of this, un, of whatever the underworld is. And when I said combine a streetwise with admin, I wanted to see, you know, if I could discern how much of a piece uh, LSP has of that action. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, I may ask for some clarification, but you can go ahead and make that roll as you uh, as you walk around before you stop at the hotel tonight. Uh, that'll be a six overall. Five, six, yeah. Yeah. Um, I will tell you what you can tell. I, I suppose this is a restatement of what I've already said, though. Okay. It, it's clear that, like, there are kind of... There's this corporation that offers a lot of these little services and products and things, and they also exercise a lot of control. And there is... The, the, the locals both purchase those products, exist in that corporate ecosystem, and there is this huge sense of resentment like there is like a, a conflict brewing between them so those are two things that you see going on so next session um well marcello before we go so you're totally going to set in for the for the hotel but uh what's something that you want to do next session i want to hear from marcello and books just in case you want to do something crazy like go to the pet store or buy something weird uh, i don't know you know just in case you want to do anything i want to i want to make sure there's a vac suit store uh food weird food market uh attorney and judge i'm got i'm going to the weird food market for sure okay you guys remind me of that stuff next time and then books what, what do you want to do um i'll do the vac suit store okay Right on. All right. So I just want one item of clarification. You said that this is going to happen next day in terms of our visit to the Koenig's Landing. Yeah, and and so I think I know what you're going to ask. Probably what we should do at the beginning of the next session is if you are interested in the job, you should talk to the guy now. You should go to the bar. Yeah, that was um, going to be what I asked. Yeah. Yeah. So that's where we'll start uh, next time.